I'm Julia, and I'm going to share a story that happened to me, which still gives me chills just thinking about it. I work as a cashier at a Walmart on the outskirts of Orlando, and although I'm used to the daily hustle, nothing prepared me for what I experienced on a quiet night at work. That night, I was in charge of the self-checkout lanes, a usually calm area after 11 p.m., my routine involved overseeing everything was running smoothly and assisting the few customers who came by. Around midnight, I began noticing a constant presence. A man, who seemed particularly anxious and avoided eye contact, appeared several times, purchasing small items on each visit. His purchases made no sense, things like a cereal bar, then a bottle of water, then a toothpick, and only one item at a time. At about 1 a.m., driven by curiosity and a slight discomfort, I decided to make a round through the electronics section, which was practically deserted. That's when I noticed something really disturbing. The same man was now following me from a distance, hiding among the shelves whenever I looked back. He hid in such an obvious way that it frightened me even more. Scared and with my heart racing, I decided to head to the employee room to call security. On the way, my mind was a mess of thoughts about what this man might want. Once there, I had access to the security cameras and saw that he was not only following me, but had also entered restricted areas, meant only for staff like the electronic stockroom. After seeing through the cameras that the man was in areas where he shouldn't be, my initial fear turned into nervous determination. I notified the security guard, a robust man named Rick, who promptly accompanied me to confront the intruder. The corridor to the location seemed endlessly long at that moment, each step echoing in the silence of the nearly empty supermarket. We found the man rummaging through an electronics cabinet, with several products already positioned by his side, clearly ready to be stolen. He jumped when he saw us, and his expression of panic was almost pathetic. Rick demanded that he explain what he was doing, and after a moment of hesitation, the man stammered a flimsy excuse about looking for the bathroom. I knew that wasn't true, and my heart was beating so hard I could barely hear my own voice when I insisted that he tell us the truth. After a brief but intense discussion, the man finally admitted that he was trying to steal the electronics, something he said he had done several times in different stores. Rick detained him while I ran to call the police. I couldn't stop thinking about how close I had been to a potentially more dangerous situation. The police arrived and took the man away in handcuffs. I had to give a statement detailing each event of that strange and frightening night. After the police took the man away, the rest of my shift was dominated by a feeling of unrest that I couldn't shake. Rick tried to reassure me saying that everything was resolved, but something inside me disagreed. The store seemed darker, every shadow more menacing than ever. When it was finally time to close, I was exhausted and anxious to go home. However, as I walked to my car in the empty parking lot, I realized I wasn't alone. There was a car parked at a curious distance with its headlights off. My heart raced when I saw that the driver was a figure I recognized. The man the police had taken earlier. How was he there? He was supposed to be at the station. He got out of the car and began walking towards me. Paralyzed by fear, I could barely think. He was getting closer, and I noticed he was smiling. A smile that didn't reach his eyes, which burned with a fury I had never seen before. You shouldn't have meddled. He murmured when he was just a few meters away. In a rush of adrenaline, I ran back to the store, screaming for help. Rick, who was still there doing the cash closing, heard my screams and ran outside. Seeing Rick, the man stopped, his smile faded, and he quickly returned to his car and disappeared into the darkness of the night. Trembling and crying, I didn't know whether to feel relief at having escaped or terror at knowing he was out there, free. In the days that followed, I was constantly on alert. Walmart reviewed its security measures, installing more cameras and increasing the presence of security, 
especially during the night shifts. Rick and other colleagues were incredibly supportive, making me feel a bit safer, but the shadow of fear was still there. The authorities caught the man again a few days later in another similar incident, and I learned that he had a long criminal record related to thefts and aggressive behavior. He was finally detained indefinitely, which brought some relief, but the memory of that night remains vivid in my mind. I work at a large Walmart, oddly situated on the outskirts of the city. One of my duties is to ensure that the store is securely closed each night. At 29 years old, I've already accumulated several years of experience in this role, accustomed to the routine of walking through the silent, empty aisles after closing time. During the day, the store is a hub of frenetic activity, but at night, it transforms into a completely different scene, quiet, accompanied only by the soft hum of the air conditioning systems and the fluorescent lights as my companions. My job is to make sure everything is in order before leaving the building. Products neatly arranged, aisles clean, and all doors secured. However, on this particular night, something felt strangely menacing from the start. I experienced sporadic chills, as if invisible eyes were watching me, which I attributed to exhaustion after a taxing day. As I moved through the gardening aisle, the feeling of isolation grew. Each of my steps echoed in the void, and my reflection in the glass packaging of the light bulbs created illusions of movement that made me instinctively turn my head. But it was when I reached the toy aisle that the nocturnal atmosphere became decidedly more sinister. In the toy aisle, the silence seemed to absorb even the sound of my footsteps. The eyes of the dolls appeared to follow me as I passed, and the occasional squeak of a distant cleaning cart only added to my discomfort. That's when I noticed something unusual. A figure standing at the end of the aisle, almost blending into the shadows, dressed in faded, outdated clothes. Initially, I thought it might be a colleague who, for some reason, was also working late. However, something about the figure's posture and the way it seemed fixated on a specific point in the aisle made me doubt it was one of my colleagues. Moving slowly towards the figure, I tried to discern its features, but the closer I got, the more it seemed to fade into the shadows, as if it were part of them. I then decided to focus on the task of organizing the shelves, trying to ignore the disconcerting presence. However, with every aisle I turned, the figure seemed to reappear, always at a distance, never clearly visible but definitely there. It was as if it was following me, or perhaps, guiding me. The tension increased as the night progressed. Each shadow seemed to hide a threat, and every sound a warning. When I finally mustered the courage to confront the figure, or perhaps unravel the mystery once and for all, it simply disappeared. Nothing remained but the echo of my own voice in an empty aisle. As the night wore on, the game of hide and seek with the mysterious figure became increasingly intense and terrifying. With each reappearance, it seemed a bit closer, and I could swear that incomprehensible whispers accompanied its ethereal movements. A cold air surrounded me whenever it appeared, leaving a trail of chills on my skin. Determined to end this subtle pursuit, I planned to confront it in the cleaning aisle, where I knew it would appear again. I hid behind a shelf, holding my breath, heart pounding. As soon as its silhouette began to enter the aisle, I jumped out to block its path. Who are you? What do you want? I shouted, more to control my own fear than expecting an answer. The figure stopped its head slowly turning in my direction. For a moment, our eyes met, and I felt a deep sadness in its gaze. Then, without a word, it dissipated like mist at dawn, leaving behind only an echo of tension. Dazed, I stood there alone in the aisle, trying to process what had happened. The rest of the night passed in a blur, my mind stuck trying to make sense of the encounter. 
I finished my tasks and went home, but the feeling of unease stayed with me. The next day, driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, I asked my older colleagues if they had experienced anything similar. To my surprise, one of the older security guards shared that old rumors spoke of a woman who had disappeared decades ago, in the same area where the Walmart was built. According to him, occasionally, her spirit appeared, searching for something or someone to free her from her torment. I don't believe in these things, and people ask if it's okay to use strange substances during night shifts when I tell the story, but I know what I saw and, even though I don't believe, I don't challenge these things. I'm Madison, and I just started working as an overnight security guard at a large Walmart in the city. The goal was simple save money to start college next semester. Despite some nervousness about the new job, I was determined to do well, aware that the long nights would be a lonely and quiet routine. Or so I thought. It was my fifth shift, and I was already more comfortable with patrolling the huge establishment, lit only by the security lights that gave an even more desolate tone to the place. The air conditioning kept the environment cold, and the silence was almost total, interrupted only by the sound of my footsteps on the ceramic floor. Nothing out of the ordinary until, during one of these rounds, I noticed that a back door, which I was sure I had locked earlier, was ajar. It was the first sign that my night wouldn't be as quiet as I had hoped. It sparked an uncomfortable feeling in me, a kind of warning that something was wrong. Even though I felt insecure, I knew that part of my job was to handle these situations, so I took a deep breath and prepared my flashlight, ready to investigate what was happening. As I cautiously approached the ajar door, the light from my flashlight cut through the darkness, revealing recent handprints in the dust on the doorframe. My heart raced as I pushed the door, which creaked under my touch. Outside, the loading area was silent, except for the distant hum of a refrigerator. I checked the area, but found no one, which only intensified the sense of danger. I went back inside and decided to do a more detailed check of the store. As I passed through the electronics aisle, I noticed that some high-value smartphones seemed to have been moved. Someone had clearly tampered with them. The boxes were slightly out of alignment with the others, as if someone had checked them quickly. The thought that someone might still be inside the store froze me for a moment. As I continued my rounds, noises began. First, a slight dragging of feet in the toy aisle, then a muffled sound, as if someone was meddling on the cleaning product shelves. Each noise made me stop and listen, trying to discern where they were coming from and how many people might be involved. My training was basic and didn't prepare me for a situation like this, but I tried to stay calm and remember the security instructions. Armed only with my flashlight and radio, I decided to investigate the source of the noises. When I reached the clothing aisle, I saw a quick shadow disappear behind a row of coats. I headed towards the spot, and suddenly, a masked figure, dressed in black from head to toe, ran across the aisle in front of me, carrying some electronics in their hands. My instinct was to follow, but they were quick and knew the mazes formed by the tall shelves well. I quickly lost sight of them and, fearing a direct confrontation without being prepared, I grabbed the radio and called the manager. He answered sleepily, and I quickly explained the situation, following his guidance to call the police and stay safe until they arrived. The wait was agonizing. Hidden behind the cashier's counter, I heard sporadic movements through the supermarket. The figure moved from one aisle to another, perhaps looking for more items to take or an exit I hadn't locked. As I waited for the police, my heart beat so hard I feared he could hear it. I kept the flashlight off to not reveal my position, relying only on the sounds to guide me. In a moment of courage or perhaps impulse, I decided I couldn't just wait. Slowly. I came out of my hiding place and headed to the control panel of the automatic doors. 
My plan was simple. If I could close the entrance doors without him noticing, we could contain him inside until the police arrived. With trembling hands, I deactivated the automatic function and manually forced the doors to close. A loud click confirmed that they were locked. Now he was trapped here with me. I returned to my hiding spot, and it wasn't long before I heard his hurried steps approaching the main doors. There was a pause, and then the sound of someone trying to force the opening. I breathed a sigh of relief for a moment, knowing he couldn't leave, but then the reality of what that really meant set in. We were locked in here together, and he would soon discover this. Minutes felt like hours until I finally heard sirens in the distance. The sound seemed to stir the intruder even more, who began to run desperately through different aisles, looking for another exit. I could hear his heavy, frustrated breathing echoing through the supermarket. My own fear was killing me, but I knew help was near. Finally, the police arrived, entering cautiously after I opened the main door for them. They moved efficiently, guns drawn, as I silently guided them through the shadows and aisles that were now so familiar to me. It wasn't long before we heard a noise coming from the beverage aisle. Together, we approached, and they managed to apprehend the thief, who was still trying to hide behind a shelf of water bottles. The relief was immense when he was handcuffed and taken away. I helped review the security footage to confirm his activities while he was in the store, and then gave my statement, still shaking and terrified. After the incident, as the manager and police finalized the reports and reinforced security measures, I had a moment to reflect on the night. I never imagined my security job could become so intense. I was impressed with my own courage, though my hands still trembled. The experience had been scary, but also a revelation of my ability to stay calm and act under pressure. In the following days, I received praise from the Walmart management team and was recognized for my decisive action, which filled me with pride. 